now. Governments are coming under pressure as demands for more accountability and justice grow. The reputation of many leading political and business figures has been tarnished and the general public is losing patience. I'm now joined in the studio by Teresa Ireland. She's with the Business Ethics Unit of the Cologne Institute for Economic Research. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, Teresa, should we get rid of tax havens altogether? Well, this is usually a suggestion that is made in the aftermath of the Panama Papers, but I would say that a general suggestion in this case is not very helpful, but that we must approach the topic more differentiated. In which way? Because there are usually also some legal and also some legitimate users of shell companies. Um, there are all sorts of combinations. You may use shell companies for immoral and also illegal reasons. These are not to be discussed, these topics, it's clear, I think. But there are also some cases where these um, kinds of business models can actually be helpful. What would be a legitimate use for a shell company in a tax haven? Well, if we talk about legitimate and legal, we must differentiate between the, the aspect of the law and the aspect of what society expects. And um, a legitimate reason, so what society expects, would certainly be if a company wishes to acquire another company and does not want the price to rise. So uh, in this case, they can stay anonymous and use a shell company to um, bring the transaction to an end. There was a big fuss about the Panama Papers recently, but most of it wasn't illegal. Well, most of what came out of it wasn't illegal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we still don't know the, the whole impact of the Panama Papers, but they certainly left another impression than it did, for example, the purchase of a CD with data from tax evaders. It leaves a, a whole different impression in the public and also on the politics. And this is usually due to the identifiability of the offenders who are named in the Panama Papers. How do we catch tax evaders? What's the most efficient way? Do we have to rely on whistleblowers? Uh, whistleblowers are certainly one way and they have um, gained increasing importance during, during the course of the last decades. But it's always a mixture of social norms and also of legal norms, as we've seen in the case of Greece, for example. So it, it would be helpful if a potential tax evader didn't just hear from Angela Merkel, tax evasion, that's not on at all, but also from his friend at the soccer club but, or maybe from his family member. Very briefly, if you can, is the fight against tax evasion winnable? I hope it is, but I think it's at least worth trying. Very good. Theresa Iron there of the Business Ethics Unit of the Cologne Institute for Economic Research. Thank you very much for coming to the studio.